Okay, this is Rick Gaiman for DailyFantasyRankings.com um, introducing the Run It Up Challenge. So this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. It goes back to, I know a lot of Daily, fi- daily Fantasy players have also played poker at some point um, when online poker was thriving. And basically this goes back to those days. So you used to always get educational videos from guys who would start with, say, 50 or or $100 and go through everything necessary to run that money up as high as possible or to a specific goal. So same thing here. This is this is going to be a series of videos um, probably five or six times a week. I mean, I'm going to do it every single time I play, which is pretty often. There might be a day here and there I take off depending on the slate or some things I have going on in life, but I'm going to try to do this as much as possible. Um so I'm going to walk through everything that goes through my mind when when trying to do this. Um, obviously, bankroll management is the number one thing. So we're going to talk about bankroll management. We're going to talk about strategy. We're going to talk about the resources that I use to try to build these lineups. And um, everything will be completely transparent. And we'll just do a, a running tab every single day. And we'll see how much we can run up. We'll start with $100 and see how much we can run it up. Um I don't have a set goal in mind. I mean, if we went 20 times and went to 2000, uh, you know, maybe we stop there. Maybe we keep going. Who knows? So this could be, you know, this is an open ended type of challenge and, and we'll see where it goes. So I don't want the first video to be too long because I'll touch on a lot of things um, as we go. But to, to me, there's really only two rules that I'm going to go by for this challenge. And the first one is strict bankroll management. So we're going to start with $100, and on any given night, we're not going to have any more than 10% of our bankroll in play. Um, pretty simple. So the most we can lose in a night is 10%. Um, I think that's a pretty safe number. I'd prefer I'd prefer to go 5%, um, but with the size of the games on um, on DraftKings, which is where we'll be doing this, it's it's not great. So that's, that's rule number one is we're going to do 10% a night. Rule number two is that we're going to only do one lineup, and I'm a big believer in this. Um, I don't, I don't get in five different tournaments and roll out five different lineups. I think you're really just hurting yourself. I think each lineup tends to be a little minus EV. Um, so I would really prefer to just keep the one lineup rolling. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'll, I'll talk more in depth about this, but creating one lineup, your favorite lineup really makes you make the tough decisions. It makes you pick between guys like Anthony Davis and LeBron James and, um, you know, stuff like that all the way down. You have to make the best decision for your lineup in every spot. So that's why I like to do it. So it's, uh, let's get to it. It's an NBA night. Um, it is two o'clock here on the East coast. So these games don't start till seven. Now with the way the NBA is, I won't, really start making lineups or finalizing finalizing lineups until the hour before just because so much news comes out with injuries so let's start there um roto world is probably the first place i'm going to go on on any given day when i you know sit down to do my research i'm just going to roll through the news section and see what's going on um richard jefferson's going to get the start tonight i'm ignoring that um which is uh, another thing as we go through this there's a lot of different information that you're going to get and you're going to we're going to consume a lot of information but we need to figure out what we're going to need to ignore Um, and I'll try to explain my thought process behind that as well so right now I'm just kind of getting into uh, what's going on in the NBA tonight Um, JJ Hickson's going to start over Kenneth Fareed which is interesting because Hickson um, with minutes has usually been pretty effective so that's an interesting thing um, and I'm just trying to get a sense for what's going around, what's going on around the league, who's playing, who's not playing, who might be questionable. Wilson Chandler, who's a guy I like a lot, um, looks like he is going to play tonight. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind as we move forward. So this is really between Roto World and Twitter, uh, where I'm going to just go through and see what's going on, what jumps out at me. This is where you see, you know. Um, Tony Parker's not going to play tonight, so Corey Joseph might be the play. He's going to get the start at point guard. So things like that, um, we really need to know. Now, the other big resource that I use is going to be, this is my set of projections. 
it's nothing too in depth. They're they're pretty simple. Um, it just takes into account how well a player plays per possession, and then how many possessions and minutes I think they're going to play that night, and comes up with a projection and a final score. So this line, this column right here, uh, <laughs> the bingo column is basically the amount of points that I project for them. Um, the next line, which is how many points they would need to justify their price tag. So what I'm using for the NBA is um, I'm trying to score between 250 and 300 points every night. Obviously, if you go over 300, great. But um, I'm really looking for guys that can get uh, five or six times their salary. So if I say um, a guy, so Jamal Crawford's 5,000 tonight, five times his value would be 25 points, six times would be 30 points. So um, one point for, I'm sorry, six points for every $1,000 in salary is what, what we're shooting for. Um, this 5.6 times rule column, uh, shows how many points if they're, if they're, whatever their projected score is based on their salary. So if Robert Covington tonight scores 30 points, as I project him to, that's going to be 8.4 times his salary. So that's obviously huge. So that's what we're, we have this list sorted by. So this is just another thing. I don't, you know, live and die by these projections, but it is just a way for me to um, see what's going on, see what's happening tonight. Sometimes I'll throw them into a lineup optimizer and see what the highest total that can come out of it is. But really, these lineups are a lot of feel. So going into tonight's, which I think there's, yeah, there's seven games on the slate and we have... 10% of $100 to enter into tournaments. So we've got $10 to enter. Um, I'm going to stick with the $2 games on DraftKings. And what we're going to do is, and I guess it's not, you know, I don't, I don't like hard rules, but this is kind of a rule for us here to start. For every one GPP we play, we're going to play three to three or four times that in cash games. So we want to have a GPP lineup out there, which is going to be the same lineup across the board. So we want to have an, a shot to win big money in a GPP, but um, it, it's not great bankroll management because they there are so many players in them to just go strictly in GPPs. So what we'll do on the first night is we will play one $2 GPP and four $2 50-50s or heads up, which will uh, be our $10. So... Um, the, the GP or the cash games is kind of what keeps us afloat and we will grind out a little bit of profit and the GPP is your, is your lottery ticket. If you come up with that lineup of the night, um, and jump your bankroll. So, uh, you know, I like to have a, a good mix of them because if I see so many guys who just play 50 fifties or just play heads ups and they drop a, a 330 or a huge score and you know they won 25 bucks because they didn't have it in any gpps and that can really mess with your mind so we're gonna have a shot it's at a big number every night um and that's the way that's the ratio that we're going to use so three to four times the number of cash games for the number of gpps so let's get to it um so I've got a couple of guys on the top of my head who I think are really going to be interesting plays tonight. And I've gotten to these through reading Roto World, um, seeing what's going on through Twitter, obviously playing the first, you know, two months of the season, knowing who who's doing what. Um, and the way that I construct this lineup is I see so many guys who, since DraftKings defaults you to the point guard, that must mean that I have to put my, my point guard in first. Well, no, not really. Or because... Uh, James Harden is 11,000 and he's most expensive. Maybe I, I'll put him in first. Uh, you know, there, I guess there's really no right way to do it. I prefer to avoid both those routes. Um, I would ideally, if you're going to start plugging in guys based on salary first, I would do your lower price guys. Cause that's going to give you flexibility later when finishing up the lineup. So I don't tend to buy into either one of those, but what I'm going to do is, I'm plugging in the guys that I really want in there first. The guys that I'm most confident in, whether they're ten thousand or whether they're three thousand, I'm plugging in the guys that I want to be staples in my lineup, and then I can get a little more flexible later um, uh, as as we go. So, number one guy that I really think I need tonight is going to be Robert Covington. And as of like a week ago, you probably didn't know who this guy's name. He plays for the Sixers. They're terrible. He wasn't even on the team until about you know a week or 10 days ago, and he's been absolutely insane. So 
if we click on Robert Covington and see what he's done over the last, let's see here, five games or so, uh, he had an 18-point game, which was his worst, which based on his salary of 3600 would still not kill us tonight. Um, but besides that, he's gone 27, 33, 35, and 40 points last night against Brooklyn. So he, the guy can shoot the three. Um, he jacks up a lot of threes. He makes a lot of threes. Him and Michael Carter William, Williams seem to have a, a, a thing going together where MCW will look for him a lot, and his salary is just insanely low. So Robert Covington is the number one guy we're going to plug in here. Um, for 3,600, you know, if he scored, oh man, you know, 20 points, that's great. Uh, I think he has a, a much higher upside than that and he should easily hit value. So he's the guy that we're, we're plugging in number one. Okay. So let's move along here. And I know another guy that, um, has been really interesting lately is, uh, Patrick Beverly, who Bevs was hurt uh, last week, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, he missed the games from the 22nd to the 6th. So he's been hurt a lot. So his his price declines. But if you look at this, he's playing 40 minutes a night the last two nights. Like, that's insane. And anytime you get a guy who's going to be out there for 40 minutes, you, you really like it. And he's been producing. So, I mean, in the, in the last four, he hasn't done worse than 33 points. He's a, a really solid play tonight um, for his price. Again, we're just looking for 25 to 30 points, which he's blown away each of the past few nights. Now, what you'll see me lean towards is since we're only doing one lineup, I'm looking for guys that have high floors. Um, you may not win a GPP like this. I mean, obviously, you can, you can always win a GPP like this, but... I would rather a guy who is going to score between 25 and 35 every night than a guy who's going to score between 15 and 50. It's just when when you're pumping out one lineup, I want the best chance to to make money to grind it away. Um, so I'm looking for guys with high floors. Beverly is just that. He fits the mold. So we're going to plug him in at point guard right off the bat. Okay. Um, as we go, you'll continue to see uh, this number here, your average remaining salary. That is, so right now we're at 6,800. Um, again, I like to plug in the, the cheap guys that I know are going to be really good tonight. So let's see. So we got Beverly here. Beverly was, I have him at 5.7% tonight. I think he's a great value. Covington was obviously my highest valued player of the day. Um, scrolling through these, Solomon Hill is a guy who is that um, low floor, high ceiling guy. So if we click him, just show you this real quickly. Um, so here's the last four games, 29, 8, 25, 18. That's a little too much risk for me. I obviously, I had him the night he had eight points that hurt. Um, it's just not great here. And his his minutes have kind of been inconsistent. He only had 17 that night. There's a lot of guys, CJ Miles and CJ Watson have kind of been taken over in, in Indiana. So he's a guy I want to avoid because he's a little too volatile for me. Um, let's continue to just fill up these positions up top here. And Victor Oladipo is a guy that I was targeting. Let's see what he's at here. So he's a little further down my list. Um, Oladipo, I have him at 4.7% tonight. I have him for just under 30 points. I mean, literally almost 30 points exactly. Um, but there's something about that where he's just been, like I, like I said, I don't live and die by these. So he's been playing a lot better recently. So if we click his, click his game logs, um, again, the last four nights he's been over 27 points. He's been in the 30s. He had a game of, of 18, but then 43. So, you know, he is a little more volatile, but I mean, look at these. He's, he's basically 25 to 35 every night, and you know what you're going to get from him. If we get 30 points, it's not quite five, per, or five times value. Um, but anything over that would be pretty good. So 30 points is what we're looking for out of Oladipo tonight. Um, he's playing a lot of minutes. He played 34 minutes last night. I, this is the, this is a back to back home, home and home. So Atlanta, they played at Atlanta last night at home versus the Hawks tonight. So I think he can kind of feast on that a little bit. He can, he's, he's very familiar with them. Obviously they just played last night and his salary did not go up. So I think Oladipo is a really safe play. He's a young guy where I'm not afraid to use him on 
um, the second night of a back-to-back. -back. <clears throat> okay, let's continue to roll through. Um, if we continue to check my projections here, some of these guys I'm not willing to roster. Tony Roten, who's just back from injury, isn't seeing a lot of minutes now. There's a lot of guards in Philly. Um, not willing to roster him. Chris, Chris Copeland has kind of fallen off lately. J.J. Hickson is interesting. Really like J.J. Hickson. So he projects out 5.7%, or I'm sorry, 5.7 times. And if we, if you remember when we saw in Roto World, it looks like Hickson's going to start again and Farid is going to come off the bench. So this is interesting. Let's look at J.J. Hickson, who I've rostered a bunch of times this season. I really like him. Um, so let's look at his game logs here. To me, he is more of a solid NBA player than he is a daily fantasy player. Um, a guy who gets 23 minutes, which is probably around his max. I can't imagine he's going to get many more than that, even starting. Um, he's liable to score you 15 points. And at his price range, if you need to go five times, you need to get over 20, which he's done before. It's just not... It just hasn't been that consistent lately. I really like the guy. I think he's a, a big-time energy guy, but better real-life basketball player than fantasy basketball player. So we're not going to go with J.J. Hickson tonight. Um, I said I love guys with minutes. So no one over the past couple weeks has played more than Darren Collison. 42 points against Houston two nights ago. I'm sorry, 42 minutes, 38 minutes, 32 minutes. I mean, this guy is a minutes machine, and he's really been producing. So you see he's cracked uh, 40, what's that, five times in his last 10 games. So he's liable to go off and, and fill up the stat sheet for you. At 6,500, we probably only need, you know, over 30 points, a couple over 30 points, and he's done that basically – seven out of the last 10 games. So he, he's pretty consistent. He has a pretty high floor. I'm confident in Darren Collison. I plug him in into our guard spot. Okay, let's uh, let's round out the small forward here while we're going at it. And none of these guys really jump out at me. Um, Nick Batum, I like a lot, but, you know, I'm not in love with him for 6,500. He's basically exactly 30 points every night. If you look at it, he had a one bad game the other night. But, like, if you look at this, very consistent, but it's actually under his value. Um, so can't really touch him because he's not will, he's not liable to go off too crazy. Tobias Harris and Wilson Chandler are basically the same player for me. I'm going to avoid them both probably. Let's continue to look here. I'm, I'm doing this on the fly. I don't really um, have anybody in mind. So let's continue to look here. Solomon Hill, we talked about him. Don't love him. Um, okay, so this is an interesting range here. CJ Miles uh, left the game last night. Don't know what he's probably not going to play here. Let's see. Should be back on the court soon, possibly Saturday. I'm not in love with it. Um, last night was the first night that he actually started, so there's a lot of question marks with CJ Miles. A little too risky for me. Here's a guy. Luke Mbamute. So I'm a Philly guy, unfortunately. But when you watch this, he's pretty good. So Mbamute has been starting. And let's look at his game logs recently. Okay. So played 33 minutes last night at Brooklyn. So that's a good sign. He's still playing a lot of minutes. Um, 22 fantasy points, which would have been good for his value. That would have been five times um, at 4,000. So that would have been okay. 27, great. He's... Uh, He's capable of going off and filling up the stat sheets, 14 points, 11 rebounds. This is a really interesting play here. So basically in his last 10, in his last nine games, his worst game has been 16 points. If he scores 16 points, that's only four times, but it's only four points off what we need. So it's not terribly crazy. And that's his, basically his worst than his last nine games. If he scores 20, you're happy. If he scores 24, you're very happy. Um, and he could go higher than that. So Mba Mute really interests me, and he's he might fly a little bit under the radar um, since he, let's see, he didn't hit value. Well, he hit value last night. It was close, but he hit value last night. Um, 
and you know I, I feel like a lot of guys if you're gonna pick a if you're gonna pick a 76er it's gonna be Michael Carter Williams or KJ McDaniel so Umba Mute uh, I like him here and I'm okay with going with two sixers these guys have been filling it up and let's face it somebody has to score the points there um, somebody has to score fantasy points so why not be these two guys which have you know a proven track record the last 10 games or so okay um, let's round out this now. I, what I don't like about DraftKings is you couldn't even play three centers if you wanted to. So you kind of have, to me, you have to be a little pickier at center. You could play two if you wanted one in the center spot and one in the utility spot, but it's not like, um, point guard or any other position where you could technically play three if you really wanted to. So, um, we saw Hickson for 4,400. That's pretty, pretty good. I don't love it. Larry Sanders, I don't like playing a lot of bucks. They just have they go through the twelve man rotation, and it's really a crapshoot on who is going to, going to get the minutes every single night. So I don't love that. We've got some money to spend here. We got eight thousand a player left. So I mean, we can scroll up and kind of see what's going on here. And again, I'm doing this as we go. Al Horford, like him as a as an NBA player. Don't love him as a fantasy guy. Hibbert is interesting. He, I believe, you know, I've, uh, I use teamrankings.com for a lot of these stats, and I believe Portland's in the bottom five or so as far as giving up points in the paint. So Hibbert might be interesting, but uh, he's a he's high risk too. I feel like I've, every time I've rostered him, he's like been hurt. he's left to go to the locker room. He's been hurt. Um, let's see what he's done the last ten. Yeah, he's just too risky. I mean, for seven thousand, this guy hasn't touched value in basically his last five games that's a risk i'm not willing to take uh when he's good he's really good when he's not he's really bad so that that would kill you if you paid seven thousand or seventy one hundred and he puts up 13 points or eight points that's going to kill your entire lineup so i just can't risk it on hibbert tonight here's a guy that's interesting deandre jordan who is coming off i guess it was two games ago was that massive game where he went for 12 and 19 but if you look at this really really like guys that can fill up the stat sheet without points. So look at this rebound column as I go down here. Eight last night. I, I'm going to guess that's his worst in a long time. 19, 14, 18. Yeah, look at that. I mean, he's a, he's a guaranteed double-digit rebound guy. So right off the bat, you're basically getting spotted, I don't know, 15 points or so for rebounds. And now you basically got to get 20 more to hit his value some other ways. He's a block machine. Look at these. One, three, four, five. Three, four, three. I mean, he's a block machine. He can fill it up there. So with rebounds and blocks, you're already at, what's that? Call it uh, 15 plus 6, 21 points. You're basically at 21 points already. Um, he's going to, looks like he's going to throw in a steal or two. And then anything on the point side is just gravy. So he's good for, you know, 8 to 14 points a night, 8 to 12 points a night, something like that. So He's pretty safe. The way he rips boards is great. You just hope he scores 10 points. You get the double-double bonus. So DeAndre Jordan, okay, really like him. I think they could really feast on on Milwaukee tonight. Um, probably don't need to go crazy with Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. So DeAndre might be a big play tonight. So let's plug him in and see what happens. Okay, so there we go. We've got two spots to go. We've got 85-50 left. So now we can kind of get into some really good stars. So we've filled out this roster with um, some really solid players that I think are going to hit value. We can now kind of pay up for some stars. Now, my mentality, so there's different, there's a lot of different strategies here. Some guys like to, you know, put LeBron James and Anthony Davis in the same lineup and stack a bunch of 3,000 guys with them or something like that. That's not me. I prefer a lot of the, you know, eight of these middle tiered players. Again, all I'm looking for is who's going to hit value, who's going to get five or six times. And when you start paying 10,000 for a player, so let's go, we can go to utility here and look at everybody. When you start, when you pay 11,000 for James Harden, he needs 55 points at least to hit value. Now, can James Harden, Harden get you 55? Yeah, absolutely. He had near had 70 two nights ago. So yeah, he can absolutely do it. But even on these nights where he goes and scores you 40 points, which sounds great, not even close to value. 35, that would kill your lineup because you're, you know, you're basically 20 points off what you needed from him. So yes, he's completely liable to go crazy. And geez, oh man, looking at this, it really, it really makes me wet my whistle on wanting to play him. Just how really, how good he's been. 
but it's just such a big risk. Like here, even if he scored 49 and a half, which he's done twice in the last four games, oh man, it's not good enough. It's close. It's not good enough. It's really, uh, he's, a, I don't know. This is actually, looking at this is kind of talking me into it. I wouldn't be mad if you wanted to roster James Harden tonight. I think he's going to be really good, but it's not really my style to go with him. So I'm I'm probably going to pass. Let's see what we have at forward here. Um, and again, I always want to fill out the utility last just because it's, you know, you can pick anybody. So um, let's look through these guys. I'm looking through them with you for the first time here. Josh Smith, if he could make a bunch of shots, that'd be great. But he, he throws up the worst shots. I just, you know, I'm not a fan. Rudy Gay doesn't do much for me. Um, so we can spend, so we can kind of stay in this range up here. What about Zach Randolph against the Sixers? That wouldn't be so bad. So Randolph against the Sixers probably needs you 35 points or so. Um, he is pretty risky, you know, for my liking, because if he scores you, if he has a game like this where he has 16 and 9, he hasn't even come close to value. So he scores 25, so that hurts. Um, he can score 50, though, for you. I don't mind Zach Randolph because, especially against the Sixers, I have no idea who's going to stop him. I think he could probably manhandle anybody inside. Okay. Let's let's plug Zach Randolph in there. I think that's a good play. So now we got 9,700 left and at any position we want. So really interesting. DraftKings, this is brand new, right? These five, uh, these five are red, so we can't use them. So, um, actually, it's pretty interesting. It doesn't always happen like this, but the the most expensive guy we can uh, we can afford is a guy I really like. So I like Ty Lawson. Um, I don't really mind leaving money on the table here. So I'm not looking to get exactly fifty thousand or that close to it. I just want to get the right. I think Damian Lillard, Lillard could have a big night tonight. He can pour it in. Really like him tonight, but. We could go Ty Lawson here. Let's see here. The, the, against Houston, this is going to be a massive... Um, I think there's going to be a ton of possessions tonight. I think they're going to move quick, which is good for Lawson. He can fly. And this game, if I remember correctly, was a blowout. Um, and he came... That's why he only played 30 minutes. He came out. They didn't need him. So even in a 30-minute blowout, he scored 34 points. Well... It, it's not going to be a blowout at Houston tonight, so I think he's going to play more than that. You can see he plays a lot of minutes. Um, he's a pretty, pretty, pretty safe play in my opinion. He's going to need well, you're going to need fifty points from him, which he gets pretty close 40, 50, 40, 50 every night. That's not bad. I could go Ty Lawson here. So if we plugged in Ty Lawson, uh, that's a pretty solid team. Although I'm still like I'm still stuck on I'm still stuck on James Harden. Let's see what we we would have to do to get rid of or to get James Harden in there. Um, Collison I like, Jordan I really like. I really like these guys. We wouldn't say much. Randolph is probably the only guy we can move out. So we could either go Randolph and Lawson or Harden and uh, see that's the problem. The problem is when you get down here you'd get you'd get KJ McDaniel's and it's not yeah. Unfortunately, as much as I would love to get Harden in there, I don't really want to touch the rest of these guys. So it's either Harden and, yeah, say KJ McDaniels or Randolph and Ty Lawson, which is probably going to get you more. So we'll go Randolph and Ty Lawson. So there it is. That's the first roster construction we're going to do in this challenge. I'm going to plug this into... Um, I'm going to plug this into the one $2 GPP. I think it's called the Layup on DraftKings. I'm going to use it in four either heads-ups or 50-50s. Um, this might not be the exact lineup. I really like this lineup a lot, but as I've said with the NBA, you really want to, um, as you get closer to game time and you see if there's any game time decisions, if anybody tweaks their ankle in warm-ups, there might be an opportunity there. But this is a pretty solid lineup that I'm going to roll out and feel comfortable with um, doing it. So... Keep an eye on it. Uh, tomorrow, what I'll do is I will um, start showing, you know, I'll have all the stats. So how much we won, how much we lost, how that's going to change what's happening. We'll look back at this lineup and see how it did. I'm going to try to keep these relatively short, um, but they might get a little longer as we go as we've got to do some roster review 
I'll get a lot more into strategy and research as opposed to just plugging in the lineups. But um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, would like to see specific things, shoot me a comment here at the bottom of this post or uh, you can find me on Twitter. It's the DF rankings. Um, yeah, hit me up. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll talk about this lineup tomorrow. See you.